from the Simonis Aramith Arena at the Sheraton Norfolk Waterside Hotel, Pat Fleming presents the 2022 International Open. Thank you, thank you very much. The International is brought to you by Accustats, and it features the greatest players in the world coming here to compete in one pocket, 10 ball, and nine ball. We'd like to take a moment here to express our appreciation once again to our great industry partners and sponsors, Diamond Billiard Products, Simonis Cloth, and Aramith for their support, not only of the international, but professional pool around the world. And of course, we want to thank each and every one of you, our great customers out there who have been with us, hopefully all week and in the past, and for all of the folks that have come here to watch live in person. Thanks very much for making us a very special pool family. Okay, terrific matchup here for you on the international level. Let's start out by introducing our first player from the Republic of the Philippines. This gentleman is the 2021 US Open nine ball champion, sponsored by Predator, Kamui, and A+. Please welcome Carlo Beato. <laughs> His opponent from the United Kingdom. He's a four-time major champion with multiple world titles. In 2017, he received our sport's highest recognition with his induction into the BCA Hall of Fame. Sponsored by Predator, Tiger Products, and Rassen, ladies and gentlemen, Dynamite, Darren Appleton. <laughs> Your official timekeeper is Dwayne Payne. We're gonna send it up to the comm box to Mark Wilson and Double J, take it away. Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. World Class Pool, brought to you by AccuStats, the worldwide leader in billiard programming. I'm Mark Wilson, and let's get some opening thoughts from veteran and broadcast partner, Jeremy Jones. Yeah, well, they mentioned all the accolades for both these guys, and Carlo, who got that green jacket with the U.S. Open, I'm sure he's going to be a Hall of Famer as well. And uh, Darren Appleton, who pretty much has every trophy in the sport. A very resurgent Darren Appleton in the last couple of years, too. He was a, a while where he kind of went through a slump, and now he seems to be back. Beato's won the lag. And that's pretty big. Breaking, yeah. Breaking from pretty well inside that side rail, once again, to prevent that corner ball from leaking out. And I think you get a little more height on the cue ball, usually. Just a little, you know which I think is good on the new felt. Now you do give up the cut shot sometimes, I guess, but. Always loved Darren's compact stroke. He's got that real simple stroke mechanics and that contributes to consistency. And then he's got a tough minded uh, competitive nature about him too. Yeah, he's a bulldog, that's for sure. He can come across this slowly. Well, kind of flirting with that pocket a little, but got the four up. I always enjoy watching his online videos of these training exercises. My goodness, he does the hardest things ever. Yeah, really great cue ball. And that just, you know, there is some benefit, right, to the smaller table, which he started on, I think, for the most part. English eight ball. Mm -hmm. I mean, you really, you learn quickly on some things. Cue ball has to be good. You know, the smaller stroke came from that probably, I would think. All right, these may split open. I don't know if I go at this very hard. I oh, held it nice. Boy, what a good shot that was. Yeah, he kicked up into it with a little spin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you make a great point. If he comes at it flat, then that cue ball leaks up the rail or uh, up the stack. And I think the seven kind of splits open a little more as well as two things could have gone gone wrong. A two rail kick at the ten here. And things like this, uh, this has gotten away from a lot of players this week. Uh, I was gonna say things like this. Darren did very well. Um, like when he first started playing one pocket, just his pool sense and, mm -hmm. you know, knowledge of other games. 
Yeah, really. You have to be willing to take a foul there and make sure you get to the other side of the tent. You can't let the cue ball up there. Yeah, you want to go slowly <laughs> into that bottom of the ten ball. And Carlo wanted to, you know, his strength is going to be running a lot of balls. Now he could shoot the three, right, and come around to open the 11. I think the 11 goes, and he could leave the 12 and 14 if he wanted. He could come all the way to the one, really, to be honest with you after that. But this is okay. It's just going to take a little more cue ball movement mm -hmm. now that he didn't move the three first. But And it'll be much more tricky getting on that one, right? Off the 11. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, he might even go after the one off the three rather than try to get perfect on the 11 so that you can get the one. Probably plays a little bit easier going the other direction. Yeah, I agree. Good call. Because, I mean, you're going to, even if you get straight on the one, right? You know, you get one ball getting on the one, get one ball getting on the 11, but better chance to get them both if you get on the one first. And if you get on the one and fall flat, you can still bank the four. You don't have to right. pound. You don't have to take any risk. And that's the thing. You get a little thin on the one where it's not shootable. You get thin on the 11 where a miss on the 11 could cause a big problem. Yo, yeah, he, he went perfect. after the one. That was a good decision there. Yeah, and the good thing is just what you said word decision he can make a decision from here he doesn't have to pound over for the 11 he's got a what is it a four nothing lead so he can keep it simple and just play for the bank and then pin that cue ball in the stack and watch out for the nine i don't i think it's a little low though i like this better the seven actually yeah if you can do this then you can go back up for the 11 if you want yeah i was looking at the table itself and the camera had me a little snookered everywhere i couldn't see yeah. the seven really but i could see the four this is better though because of speed right you can just play real nice speed where you know the seven's going to be over the pocket if you don't make it hey you said it it's right over the pocket and believe it or not talk about this at the end of the game a lot when the balls are up table but if you leave him in the stack more on the four right yeah and say even if the speed's on well he's close to the balls to where he may be able to knock one over and stitch you up a little bit on top of something you know to where yeah. he, you can't play a combination and there's a ball available now a little open that's scary so when you leave him away it's a lot harder for them to do that it's not exactly on but this might be the time to play the combination on the nine just because you're trying I to agree. do anything else, it, you're not going to get much. And Unless you absolutely think, it, you know, you just can't make it. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Would you test him on the 11 if you kicked at the 7 and tried to scratch off of it, moving it over? You know, giving up, surrendering, ball in hand? Uh, I'm not I mean, a fan because he, he doesn't have to shoot the 11. No, he, I know, but yeah. he's still got to open balls. He's got to make a move. So, I w you know, this shot here, you would – He's going to try and hit it perfect, and he may have. Wow, look at this shot. Oh, I thought it was going to be good. But it's a shot sometimes that comes up where you mm -hmm. kick and scratch on purpose, moving the ball over. I think on this one, just... Yeah, thin cut it, go end rail, end rail, and back to the center. Yeah, I agree. I wouldn't go into any balls at all. Just straight high ball, cut, right. cut the seven. Going into balls, you can you can hurt yourself. Oh, he's going around it. Well, going he cues left. He cues left no matter what he's doing, though. Like, even though he hit left there. Yeah, now he's gotten himself in a little bit of a sticky spot, a little bit. Boy, I sure didn't think he would try to go around the rack. I thought he'd go up and down for sure. 
just so that this didn't happen. Right, he's got to secure the cue ball nicely. I mean, what's the 5 2 look like? I don't think it's yeah, any good. It's not. But it's not, but yeah, you're right. I mean, even if. Even if Darren goes to the end rail here and freezes him, right? Leaves him a little funny on the nine. I would think think about that. I would think about a foul here to the end rail. Maybe even chop the nine and go mm -hmm. two rails to the mm -hmm. end rail. You know, when you got to come off the stack right. from the end rail and it's solid like that, it can be touchy. I don't know if we can get the overhead real quick, but if we can, Jeremy's saying bring the nine down here and let the cue ball go down. Exactly. Get it below the rack, too. It's a dangerous ball below the rack. And if you didn't like that, maybe just roll him out to the upper corner, kind of straight on the nine, and let him see what mm -hmm. he wants to do from there. Mm -hmm. Oh, you see, yeah, right. Could have. Because there's like a double kiss there, maybe, if he wants to bank it. This ain't bad, though. Another reason why is, you know, he can't really move balls. Good job there. Tuck that cue ball in there between the five and eight. Yeah, can he kick across and push on the five and go into like the eight with the cue ball and like move the two over a little bit? I mean, it's not sitting bad if he can get to that side rail. Yeah, it looks like the five, you know, it's hard to tell from here if it hasn't cut off from that, but I like your idea. Yeah, because the five will carry you a little bit with the cue ball. I mean, even if you don't get a rail, it's yeah. not the worst shot to wiggle a ball open. No, he's going to go back on the stack. That's all right. No. That's okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, he got up there, but if he goes low, he's, he's <laughs> cutting out the cutting the <laughs> five in, right? He but was pretty darn close. To the, he got the upper half of the eight, but if he gets the lower half of the eight, it's big problems. Yeah, this is a touchy shot right here if he's going to try and play the four across somehow. tell you if nothing's dead here what's Carlo looking at Mark is he looking at shooting the 13 and just stopping the cue ball there at first that's why I thought he was considering but that's then okay what I was gonna say is maybe just rolling the 11 and putting him in the upper right corner yeah I don't see him shooting the nine and and that may be your safest think shot. He's just pinning it to the four here and move the six a little bit. Yeah. Fifteen's gonna come across. Oh yeah, boy! Wow, look at that. what a shot that was. Man, oh man. And he cut him off. Well, now he can see the eleven. The kick on the five's not bad. Pretty big ball to kick at. Going to the top rail. Well, he can't hide the cue ball in hmm. that shot, so he can't shoot that. Meaning he can knock the 15 close to his hole, but he can't put the cue ball anywhere safe. He's going to leave a kick behind it or a bank. Or it's really interesting how uh, Darren has been handcuffed. Every time he comes to the table, he's had to consider kicking at something or, or just rub the stack and try to get back on the stack. He's never once had an open look. Yeah, that kick he missed coming underneath the 10 early. Carlos kept full control. He's got to go long rail on the five or attack on the 11. I like the kick on the five just because it's pretty easy. Looks like he's considering shooting. You can't blame him. If he connects here, though, he does have some, you know, offensive implications here. He did. Great shot. Well, and that's a lot of him knowing if I'm going to shoot it, I mean, let's commit, you know. Let's make that. Yeah. yeah. I do love that. Good mental toughness there. I right, got a little angle, but not much. He'd like to pound it and just drift on top of the four and just rub that four and 15 apart. I don't know if he can do that. No, yeah. he could draw back and get to the eight, though. Well, the six goes as well. So this is like his eight ball skills, right? When the mm -hmm. pocket's covered up, he's just coming behind the balls. The five banks also later on. 
He's kind of taking his breakout ball away right now, but that's okay. Now he did 0-2 to start this run. So I just got two on the plus side. He might just play for the, no, he's going to play the six. Well, I think he may consider holding the angle here. No, he didn't. Because if you get the proper angle, hard not to want to go into the edge of the 15. Right. I mean, if you get there. The bad thing is, if you don't get there, you might not get the bank, uh, you know, where you can get on the bank easily, right? So you kind of commit to getting on the bank first, is for sure. What do you think's next? I mean, you kind of want to ice this bank, so that puts you above the balls a little, doesn't it? Yeah. Just a hair? Oh, yeah, quite a bit. Yeah, I don't want to hang this bank, I guess, unless I'm really protecting. Yeah, what about the cross corner on the four? And two balls. I, I think he makes that ball if he just uses a little bit more pace because you're not going to get anything being cute anyway. It's either make or miss. You're not going to miss it by a mile. Yeah, and it's uh, it's just kind of interesting. I was wanting to see him make it and get above because I was curious what the next shot was I with the 415 kind of funny. Two railing it, you know, I mean. Uh, or chipping the four and running the cue bar or something like that. I don't know. I was just wondering what he was going to do, but. I wouldn't want Carlos shooting at this ball to beat me. I wouldn't. Well, I don't now, think anybody does. He's yeah, but he doesn't want to doesn't want to make it and stick himself up. So he's got to kind of commit on how he wants to shoot this. Do I want to hold the cue ball on the balls, laying the four over, or do I want to go for it? Yeah, nice shot. Good job with the cue ball. It's got it wedged in there good. The kick on the four again. If you really want to take a legitimate chance of winning this game um, without fouling, you know, and mm -hmm. balls being spotted and you taking the worst of it anyways, yeah. I think yeah. the kick on the four is the shot. Yeah. It's far enough out of the pocket if you can hit it decent. Yeah. Well, and the good thing is most likely, Mark, sorry, the only way you scratch is if you catch it super thin most likely, and that moves the four over. So even, even if that happens. Mm -hmm. No, it's real tough to scratch off that four. And the five doesn't bank, so you may surrender to the five, but that's better than fouling and being in a bad situation mm -hmm. here, especially after getting yourself back in the game. Yeah, you're gonna. You're, if you're kicking at the four, it's gonna be so light that the four ball is never gonna come up for a bank. You, know, you just try to wedge it in between and have the four blocking the five. Yeah, it'd have to be a really twist back bank. Mm -hmm. Now, the problem here is he may have stuck himself on the 15. So that bank, if Carlo just takes a right. foul back, he, that kick shot may not be available. Exactly. Now, the three-rail kick, is that available? Uh, not now. It's on the two. Well, you may be able to manipulate that one, though, at least. Oh, I wouldn't touch it at all. I'd I wouldn't move go it. that direction. I wouldn't move it at all. Oh, that's surprising. Did he give him the rail first? On the five? That's surprising. He opened up the cue ball quite a bit there. And maybe there was something there that we didn't see. Like he had to move yeah. it to, to not give yeah. up the rail first. That makes more sense. But the long rail kick still there. Now, what Darren did in the last shot is he, you know, kind of, let me see what Carlo's going to do. Oh, he hit it too light. This is going to hurt, maybe. Huh? Not bad. Okay. Not bad. In fact, real good. Yeah, this is, let's see how good your three rail kick is here, <laughs> Carlo. The problem he has is. Off the fourth rail, you, you know, he can't afford to scratch off the five and move it over a little bit with the 15 being there. I 
and on the slick table. Very hard to come off the seven and get behind the five without a scratch. <clears throat> I think you it's know hard to get behind it anyways. When you when you get in this predicament right here, it's not that bad to play the seven with power and stun into the five and either make it or hope that they get jiggled up in an odd predicament. I think you're absolutely right as far as if you're going to go that route. If you're going off the seven, try and make the five. Try, yeah, trying make, to be cued off the seven and get behind the five is no, not impossible. So, To be honest with you, I'd probably kick three rails trying to co coast in there myself. But yeah, That's the other choice. Both of them have an element of danger. It's just which one do you think you get the best yield out of. But if you're going off the seven, I think you attack. And if it's three railer, then then you got to feel good about not clipping the 15 going by there. Oh, he's coming in short. Okay, not bad. Well, it's all uh, about speed because it's too easy to scratch. And that's be up close to the side pocket here now. Just maybe a half a diamond below. That's where it was. Good speed. Really nice speed. He's going to end up on top of it. I. Th Oh, wow, the table's playing sharp. Okay. That was a good effort. He didn't get a rail either, so the fifth ball, that does go for sure. The fourth ball actually goes, so he can draw back and cut the 14 and open all the balls with a little angle on the 14. He needs five, right? Four, I think. Let's see. He's got three. Three. You're right, five. So five. I would draw. Well, he's going to get out to come across the top of him. Let's see, does that have to open them correctly with the 15 where it's at? I mean, the 14's going to shake loose for sure. We know that. But you can only get the 14 if you come across the top of the two, so you're talking about a pretty precise hit on the two to get the cue ball away from the two. And now he's got to re-break a little because the seven got covered up maybe. So well. if, you, if you understood it, from behind the 14, the bottom ball was stealing. Like if he yeah. drew the ball on the first ball and got behind it, that ball goes all day. You open the entire rack. Well, now I guess he he has to cut this in and go into the seven, right? I mean, there's oh yeah, you're gonna shoot it natural else. if you're shooting it. You're not gonna put well, English. I think, well, I think it even a little bit of inside to get to the seven. Yeah, maybe. But I mean, making the ball here is the most important. I mean, you're gonna try and open them, but. Yeah, he didn't, uh, get, he didn't get there. One pocket's an amazing game. How <laughs> yeah. things come out, you know. It's well, the good news is he can erase the four ball. He should come across this with some English, a lot of right, trying to play this up on his side, just killing the cue ball on the end rail. He can come over quite a – ooh, we got off the rail quite a bit. A bit of a mistake there. I think he overcut it a little bit because look how hot the cue ball was. Yeah. Got lucky, I think. The two got kind of funny. Um, so this is kind of awkward, actually. You may have to play off the seven and just uh, let the 11 roam up and bring the cue ball back, you know, by Darren's pocket. I think if you shoot up table, you might make a mistake here. Looks like you can cross it, though. You don't want bank the two back to your pocket with top spin. No, too tough. Man. That ball out in the center is an awkward ball like that. I mean, he's not far off of straight in that corner. And that, well, the f seven does go, by the way. The fourth ball can be made with some throw. And I believe the seven, unless it got bumped off, it's still the fourth ball. But you need to be a little below it so you can kind of spin in. So. Careful here. You gotta just take his medicine and just tap the nine up the rail a little bit. May have to dodge a little bit of a bank on the two, just depending on how much the cue ball roams up, but. I think if you try to three rail this or mm -hmm. I think the two, like I said, the ball in the center of the table. Like if you ever play golf on a snooker table where they put that hickey ball in the center, right? Mm -hmm. Something about that ball in the center of the table cuts off a lot of things. Oh, yeah. I don't know why it is, but I know when we played bonus ball, it was a 
became very uh, relevant and obvious how you know it made sense to put that ball in there as an obstruction, yeah. you know. But yeah. I just crossed the two over here, put it on your side, try and hide it with the 11 7. Let the cue ball float to the bottom rail. Yeah, like that. You're trying to hide it. You let it come up a little bit. And those shots right there, right? Sometimes you got to judge it to where the two's not going to get all the way over to your side rail. It's just going to be on your side like the first diamond out. Yeah. And then you're hooking them. You know, the speed's right to lay them on the bottom rail then and everything else. So it got awkward, though. He can't cross it over. He'd like to cross it over and go up table. It doesn't appear. Looks like the side pocket's really odd. This is the one you can force and make a big mistake. Yeah. Yeah. He'd like to bank it on his side and just put the cue ball in the far corner pocket down in that area, but that point on the side pocket's right in the way. Hard to get the speed right. He's looking to bank in the seven. No. Just, just rubbing. edging it, yeah. That's okay. Now two ways to think about it there. You can hook him on the nine, right? But your cue ball's way off the rail. Very easy for him to draw off the seven, move the nine, maybe really mm -hmm. put you in. A, or you can let him see the nine, come back to the end rail, make him have to come forward with the cue ball or jack up in the air. So a lot of times I let him see the nine in this position rather than let him have the bottom half of the cue ball myself. I'm not worried about him banking the two. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not too worried about that stuff. Now he's back at the seven, it looks like. Now he can cross the two over lightly from here if he's comfortable not scratching up in the corner and kind of roam up by that seven. The nine's pretty awkward from way up there. That's okay. Nope, nothing wrong with that. Hmm. Circle the wagons there. This looks routine, but it's not. You can you can get yourself in trouble on this shot, playing the two. Well, you kind of make a decision how you want to play the game, the rest of the game. You know, you want to play with the lead, I probably chip the nine up the rail and go back over, maybe come back to the end rail, um, doing something like that. Make him come up with the cue ball. He's got to protect the bank on the two then, so or move off the two. Mm -hmm. um, that was fine. Nothing wrong with that at all. Edge the four right here. Run the cue ball back. And you're saying just move the four over by the, the 11 and two. Yeah. Yeah, real thin. Yeah, the nine seven doesn't bank really and I'm not too worried about it. Right. And you got a pretty good margin of error on that and you can control the speed. You never hit it hard enough to ever scratch, so. Yeah, and he's yeah. just gonna move on the 11 and then you can move the nine comfortably. You know, instead of having, eh, he went after a different ball. I think the two it was. But he was moving the two to his opponent's side right there and also caught a kiss. 
think anything. No, it could have turned out worse yeah. for sure. Carlo the same here, just kind of cut the four over towards the nine with a little high left. Mm -hmm. you know, hit it super thin, just go, go the end round, spin back down, you know, about the first diamond on the right side on the bottom rail. The two ball you're not worried about. Yeah, this is opening up more of a bank alley, especially just moving a ball. Not really shooting. Okay. Now Darren can do the same thing. Just cut the four above the nine back on your side with high right and run the cue ball two rails back down. The four, the two's tight to bank by the nine and Mm -hmm. If you get them near the rail, that's a hard shot to shoot at. Right. So just use the four to run the ball. I think it's a little more accurate than anything else. Just kind of replacing the four off of one rail. Great cue ball. Oh, right, real good. Is touchy, Mark. Yeah, you might say, well, he's got a bank, but it, the bank has got the, the most you can do is just get one, and it's easy to mess it up. And yeah, he wants to chop the ball and run the cue ball back down, but the seven is the only one that's a little comfortable, and you may pocket a ball in the corner doing so, like the nine. Right. So the eleven's un really uncomfortable because the four is there, the right side of it. Now you can come off the left side of the eleven pretty comfortable. But you may give up a long rail bank on the four. So this is touchy. He shoot. What a hit. I know he didn't make it, but really probably kept him off the shot, that being Darren. You know, if he hits that bad, he could get a free shot here. Mm -hmm. I th think he had, does have a shot, but it's not free. Yeah, if the speed's off, Darren can spin the ball off the four, get down below the two maybe. A little surprising with the lead here at 6-4, jacked up. Well, stone cold. Wow, pure. This is a shot that, I guess, depending on how you hit it, if you hit it really pure, you go past the ball and you don't get shape. Otherwise, you go on the 11 and sell out. <laughs> hit it pretty pure. Yeah, that's what I mean, though. He hit it really good, and he went past it for shape, right? But that's still good. I mean, he scored. But there was a lot of risk in that. If he overcuts well, it a hair, he goes right into the 11 and it, sells out the it seven. It goes right to what you were talking about, the spot shot with draw earlier. That if you hit it good, the cue ball goes right. But yeah, right. <laughs> you're, yeah, you're yeah, drawing yeah. for when you don't hit it good. You know, so well, it, the, the score thing. at least, you know, made it a little bit more worthwhile. Mm -hmm. you know? So you never know. It could have been a little lighter and maybe had a little bit more of a bank or a little bit more of a cut shot. Careful, leaving a lonely old 11 out there. Makes it more of a free shot. Yeah, don't understand this with the guy needing one. Sometimes when you don't play the game all the time, you don't realize that, you know, when you're in a real bad spot, you leave them closer to the balls, actually, uh, towards the end of the game where there's no banks, there's no not enough space to be able I to see. bank the ball and stuff like that. But Hit it pretty good. 
Really good. Okay. Well, entertaining opening rack here. Appleton now lead 1 0. Yeah, a lot of the guys that were in the straight pool now in the arena practicing, getting ready for the 10 ball and the 9 ball. There's Jason Shaw. Got his left handed stroke from anywhere. Yeah, Elliot Sanderson, Great Britain. Appleton breaking to the left-hander side of the table. Ooh, came off the top. Made a ball, so that's an automatic re-break. Even if you scratch, it's not a penalty. We start the rack over if you pocket a ball. Yeah, it's kind of like, you know, if you can't get rewarded, you can't get penalized mm -hmm. on that rule. That's the correct way to play it if you're going to play. Uh, you know, everyone likes to rack your own. Kind of makes sense a little bit uh, for the game itself. One pocket's a lot more about both players rather than just one player running out from the break or something like that. So. Yeah. And then it's a short race, so I think it makes total <coughs> sense because you're giving up such a big edge. Yeah, the 15's the, the problem, so a lot of times when that's the ball you need to guard against, sometimes that's the ball you can shoot off of. Like right here, maybe banking the 15 up and coasting towards Darren's pocket. Maybe bumping the 13 up a little bit. It's a little in between though, meaning you can't thin it and leave it underneath the 14 and do it. And to hit it thick, you gotta get into it a little bit. You can't just float it. Is he cutting it? Boy, what a shot. What a shot. He's got through all the balls there. That's a wow. tremendous. One, two, three, four, five, six rails without touching another ball. And yeah, we'll get another look at that here in a little bit. Let's see what he does on this first shot real quick. The seven's a big ball to, like, shoot and spin off the stack. So I might try and get shape here, maybe. I don't know. It's kind of a hard bank to hold your ball on, right? And you kind of, yeah. you, you're really. You have to cut this. Yeah, you're putting the kiss in. So right. does the 12 go? What's the 12 look like, Mark, with the four, two? Does it aim too, too much to the Yeah, you have round? to throw it. And the the four is not bad. The right. Throw it, the four is yeah, exactly right. So, yeah, so I might have taken a chance getting on the seven, maybe. He's trying to go up into the three. Stiffen it up. Yeah, he couldn't get the grab on the ball. I wonder if he looked at the twelve. Looks like it's aimed too low, anyways, to really kind of bet the game on. Yeah. But against Daz, he's far from out of the woods, even with the three to zero lead here. One of the touchiest shots, believe it or not, just drawn off the one down below. Mm -hmm. good, good thing is I don't think the five banks, you know, you know what I mean? So you can be a little comfortable coming below the five without a whole lot of worry. You don't want to go so far as to give up 11 ball bank, but I don't think the five squeezes long rail by the 11 if you're drawn below it. Yeah. So can they hit the 10 and the 11 and following the cue ball forward? No. Oh, he went off both balls. Okay. Hey, great play. Wow, well, that turn out. Got the cue ball on the rail. Okay, let's get that uh, replay of that shot. Here it is. Very thin. Four rails, Jeremy said. Five rails, six rails is what he called. 
Once again, Jeremy was right. Well, that happens a lot. You're playing the cue ball, and you know you have to hit it pretty tight. Got to be out of the long range here. Yeah, and you know, that kind of shot, you kind of assess the table a little bit. Like, if Darren decided to not make it, he definitely banks the one down somewhere in position, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, but he was really trying to maybe make it, so there you get closer to the pocket. But the way the 10 and 11 are and the way the other balls, if he gets the one down past the 11, you know, he's got Carlo in some real trouble. He can just bank the three away here and go to the rail, I think, and drop on the bottom rail. Oh, this is dangerous. Yeah. Rolling. And he's opening balls a little. Ooh, he's lucky the five ball bank got covered up right there at the last second of the three. All right, he can play the one. I think he can see. The, no, he can't see the one. He can definitely just rub the 11 ball and go down table, though. Yeah. I think a foul is more worthy, to be honest with you. That 11 is a funny ball. Like, get him kind of straight on the 11, up in the, on the end rail like you're talking about. He's got to come off the 10 then, and he's going into the 5. A lot of things are happening. Yeah, I'd leave him long and straight in on the 11 right here, Mark. Just take a foul to do yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because well, it's not going to hurt, actually. Too bad. Now he can play the one across, though, maybe. Can he? Yeah, he can. Yeah, he's going to wiggle him on that 4 2 right here and, and try and get the one into the five, maybe, or the three, or maybe just the one across kind of mildly. A little bit of a mistake, I think, there from Darren. Yeah, just squeeze him right on the 4 2. Went forward. Hmm. That was surprising to me. I wonder what. He must have been worried about something in the stack. I, I think he couldn't get into the. He knew he was going to hit the clutter over here. If oh, he and not get the ball across. Then, right. Okay. Would you go for the kick bank here, maybe? Yeah, it's up pretty far. It's almost a diamond up, so it's pretty tough. Yeah, I mean, not to make it, but just oh, to come yeah. across it, you know, and just, just kind of let it wander wander underneath the stack and as you go up table with the cue mm -hmm. ball. Yeah, if you can, if you feel good about it, because even if it hits the seven there, you're okay. It actually improves a lot of things. So. Yeah, I've been did but it was four days of far. commentary on Alex and Tony recently, and those guys – are so good at that shot. They shoot it when it's up a little bit. This kick ain't bad. I mean, he's got to be accurate. He plans on hitting the top side of the five somewhat, using the 10 to go into the pack. And then we'll see what happens with the rest of the balls. But could make the three off the seven. That's possible. Once again, that spin into it, like you said earlier, to control the cue ball, too. Great yeah, shot. Really nice. Oh, my goodness. What a shot. That is a crippling blow that's been outlawed in many states. Hmm. Well, yeah, he might get another kick after this. Now he wants to bump the three up a little bit. Not really hard, but at least to the side rail. I don't think the scratch is there. He could kick two rails at the one, but I think I'd try to get underneath the three here. And the reason why you put a little more speed on this, not a ton, as you get a little bounce, you hit the rail and then the ball, and then it kind of bounces off the three a little more. That mm -hmm. way you don't scratch. You get a little ricochet effect. Now, you can play it that way, but you're just not going to move it much, and the next kick shots can get a little tough. Because mm -hmm. the kick on the five ain't bad here either, and I'm not sure I would do it with a lot of speed either. Just... I almost think way. just take the foul and get it back into the where it just was. That's okay. And that because if you kick on the five, you can open up things where Darren well, can escape. If well, you that's get why him, I said mildly. You know, like yeah. maybe take the foul doing the kick on the five just to rub it a little bit. Yeah. 
because this is the process. If you chip the ball here and move the five, you're slowly moving balls away from the stack. And Darren's going to kick again, right? Oh, he got up a little bit there. He made the kick a little bit. Little, oh, well, that's fine. But Darren's going to kick again, mm -hmm. right? So if you're not willing to take the foul, you should do it early. But you're going to edge balls to where now we don't have anywhere to go as far as hiding that ball by the hole. Right. It's just the process of how it goes in this game. And Darren, I think, usually sticks to this plan. Nice shot. <clears throat> now you consider something else, the 10 maybe. You can two-rail the 10 somewhat and just kind of drop the cue ball on the rail. You can see all the 10, right? Yeah, looks like it. Yeah, he's got to do this. He can cue the ball decent. Again, just play the cue ball, about the middle diamond, maybe a little higher. That'll work. Great shot. He had to create that angle, he had to use a little bit of inside spin on the cue ball to uh, adjust the two railer to try to get it long enough. And that was mission accomplished. Yeah, the one three, very playable. Now the one thing on the one three is there are some places he can leave it up table to where, you know, kind of long and straight in on the one three, more towards the right side of the table, up you know, up the table more than the left. Mm -hmm. You don't want to leave him where he can cut the one on the three. Right. He's gonna kick at the at the ten, I think. The left side of the ten, maybe come two rails into the three. I think just speed mainly. It's a pretty right. nice hit. Looks like he hit it perfect. Wow. Oh, good speed, too. Pretty crafty. Is he kicking it? I think he's edging the 10 going in the pile, I think. He tried to. He gave up the cue ball here now. Now that's another thing about those shots, if you're not willing to take that foul and just kick in there, is you can make a mistake executing, right? I mean, those thin hits on those balls going into the stack aren't always hangers. Darren's got a cut on the seven. Yeah, he's got a chance to really inflict some punishment there. Yeah, the 11 should be hot going his way as well. Ooh, nice kiss on the 11, I think. Wow, he didn't get a shot. He's in trouble. I think he's going to bank the one. If he doesn't have a shot at the 11, I think he's going to bet the game on this one. Jacked up. It doesn't have a ton of a reward. The cut on the 10 isn't going to be great. I don't know. I think he might spin this. Yeah, he wants the 11. That's the one that really will win the game for you. Well, he could overcut it even. So. Yeah, I wonder just maybe... Great Surveying result. the table, maybe. That was a tough shot. Elevated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great player with the bridge. The one doesn't look too great to me. The ten's pretty easy to move and hold. You can't blame him if he shoots at the eight, but... You may not have much of a reward on the eight. Are you going right, right. into the ten with the cue ball? And you might chop the ten and come up on the four. You know, cutting the eight ball. Right. I don't know. I probably move the ten here, me. But maybe just yeah, because you have to use the bridge. It's not. I mean, mercifully, he's good with the bridge. But manipulating the cue ball while using the bridge is another deal. And he's over a ball with the bridge, not just a stretch. So. Wow, he's banking this. This didn't look like much of a shot to me. Yeah, That's I didn't like case. the way it looked at all. He kind of let up on the swing a little bit, but I didn't like the chances anyways, Mark. A little surprising. Hmm. Uh, that's an unusual 
uh, faux pas there, mistake. I think he'll cut the one anyways, lefty or whatever he's got to do. But I'm just saying. That yeah, it's definitely a mistake. He hit that ball heavy. He didn't even come close to getting by it. I guess he was trying to go in between them. Well, he kind of got down, and then as he made a couple strokes, he kind of looked where he wanted to go a little bit while he was down, I thought. But like I saw a little question mark there from him, maybe. But big favorite here. <laughs> Definitely not for sure. But. Look at he's here's a guy that plays the bridge with his left hand, right? <laughs> or was it his right hand? That was his right hand. Okay. It was Roberto who does left. Okay. Hand. Now the four eight goes, and we're gonna have a tie ball game shortly. Or well, we should. Make all these though, because there's banks. Those aren't free shots right there if you if you miss them. Mm -hmm. yeah, Carlo doesn't seem so comfortable with the cue ball. And he's got a I think the four's a hanger, isn't it? Just open the two a little bit. How many is he playing for? Two? Two. One. One. Oh, says, one. Yeah. Okay. All right. Our match is tied now. One game apiece. Well, that, that bank that he tried, that was the, the, the capper there for that rack. When he double kissed into it. Yeah, it was surprising to me. I thought if he was going to play the bank, he should have played it earlier in the rack when he had a little flatter go at it where he didn't have to pinch it short. Well, the thing to me is, I don't think he, or at least from what I saw, I didn't see him really consider the bank very much. You know, he considered mm -hmm. the eight. He looked around a little bit. I never really saw him look at the bank and then just, you know, not got down and shot it, but um, I just kind of felt like it was out of the picture. Uh, I looked at the angle. He's giving up the cut here. And it was, I think it was you and I talking about earlier that the lower right-hand corner seems to be breaking a little bit better. Yeah. Yeah, the right-hander's pocket is uh, not working out, but the other side, the left-hander's pocket, which yeah, is where the five ball's at now. When you break that way, it doesn't seem like the corner ball on the other side of the table's coming out as much. Yeah, I think it was Corey Duell who sold out to the same pocket here, uh, giving up the corner ball to his opponent in our last match. I think that was earlier today. D, well, no, yeah. wasn't no, D. No, it wasn't D. Well, he lost 3-0 was... to, give me a second. Well, I think he got the bank, maybe. It's not easy. I would consider banking this back into the stack. If I can cue the ball, okay, mm -hmm. I might consider this off the bottom of the 14, kind of, and put the cue ball behind the six. Pretty difficult, though. He's very elevated. Yeah, either way, it's difficult. Yeah. If you try to get pace on that 15 ball, then your cue ball retains too much speed, I think. And what he's evaluating now, I think, is his reward if he banks the 15 in. Otherwise, you don't want to give up the game going at this bank. You just want to lay the 15 over. I like that a lot. Look at that. Knocked yeah, another ball on the side. Very good shot. And that's why that bank in the last game, to me, when I've watched Darren and played him, it's been a lot of good decisions overall. <laughs> playing one pocket. Definitely playing all games. And I wouldn't try to come to the back of the 15 as far as froze to it, like two rails on it. I would just lay behind it, I think. I don't know. This is touchy. Oh, he's good at it. That's why, though, you might give up the 15 ball bank, you know? Mm hmm. Or just lay on the side rail, period. Yeah, 
And also the two ball bank. I'm not saying he's going to shoot it, but if you let it lay just right, yeah. you never know. I mean, yeah. Pretty nice shot there. Get past it. Yeah, the 12 didn't go. Efren probably two rail kicks behind the two and slides you up the rail. He's so good at that kind of shot. Uh -huh. And he'll shoot it, too. Eh? If oh, he yeah. likes the way it lays, and it lays pretty nice right now, it's a lot of ways you can hit it and you know just slide right up that side of rail. I'm not saying that's the shot, but it's a little touchy otherwise. Well, he's playing the takeout of the 15, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I know, but I think he had a little better position still, so may have been able to just ticky that ball and go up behind the two. The two got knocked over, but did a good job with the cue ball for sure. No, that route, that was the proper shot. Like if you're just like, okay, let's not take any chances. Definitely the right shot. This took a little chance here though. Eef. Now those kind of shots there, when you're, you know, if you're protecting something that's already close to the pocket, you know, you can take a little gamble. How they're going to turn out, right? Because you got something already there already. But when you don't know how they're going to turn out, hard to have an open cue ball. I think the six banks, doesn't it? Yeah. He's going to have to take a chance. To, you know, he's going to have to risk something here to get it. Yeah. But a lot of the players, like if you learn it, and you come off the end rail, right, you're, you're going to hit about the middle of the end rail. If you add a little inside, you're coming up into the seven and two to where it's very difficult to sell out. Right. And you're opening the seven maybe for a shot afterwards, you know. So, And you get to hit shoot the shot with a little more conviction. and Or you can play it like that, spin around. But say you're worried about a ball that's shootable over there and mm -hmm. you don't want to go up table with the cue ball, you could go into that seven two pretty comfortably. Now he can just uh, glide the one ball down towards his corner pocket, let the cue ball come across the table. Yeah, there's no bad angle on the 14. You'd like to go into the 9 and the 13, but as long as he doesn't get straight in on the 14, he's going to have an opening most likely. Yeah, I don't think he can really do anything on the 9-13 without taking a chance. It's, it looks like too much cut, like he's going to get, you know what I mean? He's, mm -hmm. he's going to get movement on the cue ball or the object balls, one or the other. Now, he's going to try and do it, but it looks touchy to me. Can you follow straight ahead and hit the 14 and just follow ahead down below the 1 here? And if he clip the 8, then the... I think comes down table. I, I think you can play into the eight with that shot. Yeah, I think you just kind of kind of mosey the cue ball down there though, like slowly. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh look at that! It was a bank. I didn't even yeah, see that. Hit it great. Did now they? the the yeah. reason why he drew off of that, trying to slow the cue ball down going into the balls, would have loved to have hung it. He may have to use the double up with the fifteen and the three here. Kind of open off the 12 with a lot of spin. Go to this side mm -hmm. rail and spin way up above those balls, right? Plus you're developing the 7 and 2 towards the exactly. pocket. Exactly. And the 9 eight's not really a shootable combo. I mean, it, you could take a shot at it, but with the 7 and, and balls open, I don't think you'd see Carlos shoot. If we can get the overhead real quick, we can just go ahead and... Jeremy's saying rub off of here with spin, bring this down, and then that brings the seven and the two open, maybe not towards the pocket, but out of here anyway with the two. Well, if you're willing to come off the 12 thick, you know, you can come off of it a lot thicker than people think if you're willing to put that spin on the ball and let the spin carry you up to the end rail. The problem is, you mm -hmm. know, if you do surrender a rail first or something on the one, you may open up a bank shot. Right. But 
I mean, you got to try to apply pressure, right? Right. Hey, you can't just fool around here. Beato can make his own opening. He doesn't need you to help him. Yeah, he's going to try and use that double up, I think. But now he's not getting anything. Oh, look at this. You better hope that this doesn't open much. <laughs> this could hurt a lot. Oh, oh. pretty fortunate. Hey, I like that. You know, he could have banked the nine back into the pile and used the and used the double up like we were talking about going by the 15-3. The thing I liked about the other shot is you're not opening balls like everywhere. Mm -hmm. You're opening a few near your pocket, mm -hmm. and it's real controllable with the cue ball. Yeah, fortunate that Carlo's not running out right now. Now, Carlo can do the same. If the 12-2 is not playable, he can come off the 14-8, go by the 15-3. <clears throat> Man, yeah, up to the end rail. That's a good shot. Yeah. And it lays good, too. I mean, he's like right next to it, going in between mm -hmm. the 15 and the side rail. Should be no problem. You're going to get a lot of cover up. He's going to keep it simple. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, he didn't want that two ball go over by Darren's pocket, though. Yeah, I wonder if Darren will entertain the 14-8 somehow, trying to use the double up. Could draw off the 14-8 just straight up the table like he's looking now with this cue stick. He didn't notice it earlier, I don't think, until the ball's got open more. Now he can just draw straight up the table. And the good thing is there's no banks, right? We were talking about maybe leaving mm -hmm. a bank. On, if, now if you leave the uh, long straight in on the one or whatever, maybe there's no banks as a reward for Carlo. I think he's going to draw straight up there if he shoots off the 14 mark. Now he could kind of chip off the 10, go the rail. Can he get up on the back side of the one? Chipping off the 10, it's a fairly secure shot. I mean, you may not keep your position, but well, that's okay. Uh, Carlo probably moves the 9 and 2 and draws back a little bit here. Shoot the 9 to the inside of the 2. They both mm -hmm. move, and you just draw back not to give up the bank on the 1. He's not doing that. He's going to leave the two ball there. Oh, it kicked a little. Did. Yeah, it took a lot of the pace out of the cue ball. He was definitely disappointed about that. I think he shot the better shot, actually. With balls up the table more and balls near his pocket getting over that rail, I think he's keeping an advantage he should try to keep better than the 9-2 shot I was talking about. If he gets him over on the rail, everything's a little funny. He's yeah, got to roll, yeah. you know, roll soft off the nine somehow or, yep. you know, clip something. Now, Darren can get the nine around the table you know, on his side and just kind of lengthen the game if he wants, kind of holding the ball. I don't think the two's much of a threat. But. Yeah, it's hard to say what he's got here. He, <laughs> nothing well, real good. Well, just it's a dangerous shot drawing off the four. I mean, if he feels comfortable, you draw off the four and put him behind the two, right? I mean, but you're opening balls. If you don't get there, you could sell straight out. You know, if you're a little light, you might give up the one. This is touchy. 
Or if you're a little hot, you give up the one, too. I mean, Absolutely. There's, yeah, yeah. There's this, either way, you either hit it perfect or you give up the one. And you're really taking away, um, you know, some of the balls you're really trying to get later on because you're going to move balls out of play mm -hmm. here when if you shoot off the four trying to stun draw over behind the two with some right spin. Now, it's a shot that can not necessarily win you the game but get you in a better, lot better position. Two cushions in behind the one or one cushion. A little hot, so it's going to kick up and open up the one ball bank now. And it's pretty free, too. Uh, no, maybe the four eight goes. Four eight's but. pretty playable. And it's it's a bit of a cut, but now this is the one. Don't get fooled trying to go three rails for safe and all that. I don't think, anyways. I think the right speed is just coming around. Maybe three rails kind of on top of the four. That looks like about the comfortable make speed. To You're me. saying go that far. Okay. Well, uh, maybe the table's slower than I think, but uh, maybe he just gets a little past the head string. But I wouldn't try to go three rails around myself. He's giving up the 4-8. Well, I think, you know, if you're going to – I think that's the right play. If you're going to play the bank, if you feel good about it, then you just play it for the speed that you think you'll most likely make it at. Forget the 4-8. Exactly. And that looked like what I meant, like the speed it ended up. That yeah. looked like the comfortable speed to me, that three rails to the center of the table. And anyway, it's still a combination. You don't have to get perfect position from it. It looks like Carlo will be able to do a lot with this. But Yeah, the two goes as well, so he can drop behind the two if he wants. Doesn't have to. Oh, he missed it. Wow. Yeah, it's still a combination. You Absolutely don't have to make every is, combination. And that's that was, you know, factored into why Darren played the bank the way that he did, knowing that he could sell out something, but he felt like it had enough reward to take the risk. Yeah, and it's uh, didn't expect that miss, though. That's for sure. Of course, I never expect, expect these guys to miss much, but you wonder, though, like, you know, it was the right shot to just bank the one over and lay him long on the end rail. Let him look at that 4-8 from the end rail, maybe. I don't know. I probably would have went at the bank like Darren did. Do you go between the three or thirteen and ten I might, here? I yeah, might. I kinda like that. It feels like it plays pretty natural. If you if you can get between there, boy, it makes the rest of the rack play so simple. That's definitely if he would have got a little thicker, he may have drew up. But the problem is really no bad place to go off the off the twelve ball. You know, I mean mm -hmm. if you get straight you can draw back for a little cut on the ten or the, or the eleven. Or follow ahead for the bank. Yeah, you know? or yeah. if you're most likely what happens, you get a hair of an angle one way or the other and you have them both there. I like this drawing back. Playing for two. See, so they're rolling ahead for the bank, I guess, on the eight. Oh, now he's going to draw. That's surprising. Yeah, I got to come down for the bank here, I think. You don't have to get way down there, just a little past the 11 where you can kind of hold your ball. Oh, he's perfect. Nice run out there. Darren Apple then leads the match two games to one. Boy, Sky played a good match on this table right before you came down. Uh, Skyler. Yeah, Josh Roberts really didn't make any mistakes, and you know how tough he is. Skyler just took it. Yeah, well, I mean, 
I think uh, always expect big things from Skyler, and I, I think uh, still expect it. <laughs> and I think he's going to have big things coming. He's he's practicing more, thinking about the sport more, thinking about what he wants to do in the sport more, which is what guys like him should have some of those directives, right? Mm -hmm. I think this is the pocket to break to, though. Yeah, made the ball, so there'll be a re-break. And it seems like to me, pulling the ball out. Uh, Here we get our Predator replay of the break. Yep. Straight in. But it seems like pulling the ball out isn't a bad thing on this table, right? I mean, the guys have been breaking no, pretty well. And they pulled out from the rail. Well, no, the, even on this side of the table, they I saw Josh broke from the uh -oh, uh -oh. six ball. I saw Josh break from the rail, and the corner ball didn't hardly go anywhere. And he's not going to catch six rails with the cue ball here, but he's still he's going to cut at this six for sure. Yeah. Should go survey the stack here. Now, with balls close, you don't want to get trapped. So you got to think about this one a little bit. You know, you if you can spin this in comfortably mild, you might take a chance kind of rubbing the 13 coming across, but the cue ball definitely stays open. Um, if you go into the pile here, just kind of hard and flat, mm -hmm. good luck. Well, I like going into the pile with spin and hard in between the 13 and 5, and if you just hit the 13, that's okay. I don't mind the pile, but I do it not lightly, but fairly lightly. Oh, yeah, now yeah. you're trapped. I you're mean, right. Yeah, yeah and the speed is what didn't allow it to open. Exactly. If you hit it light, the spin grabs more, and you get on the outside of the pack, and, and you just kind of take right. what you're given there. Right. right. So. Here you've made a ball and made things worse. You know, I mean, you, now you don't have anything by your pocket, and you're trapped over here, and he's got you put more balls on his side. Yeah, and there's a serious consideration um, of the four-ball bank now because of it. I mean, yeah. I know it sounds crazy, but it's delicate, the kick on the 12. Now, the good thing is the pile's pretty open, so it's not going to be easy for Darren to just continually stick you on the side of a ball, right? Mm -hmm. So if you can make a good kick shot here, he's looking at the double up. That's okay. So he's going to bank the four and, the, and then go for the double up. So we didn't really look at that much. Can't tell the angle. Actually, it looks pretty good. Maybe the worst thing he could do is make this ball. Very good. Now, the one I would have worried about is the 12, and I don't think that's available. 13 12, though. I think that is available. Well, he can make a good hit, though. It's land pretty nice. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to. Um, hit it too thin. That's a good sign on that shot, right? Yeah. Very, you know, the ball's down a hair, so still hard to hit it too thin. I think he goes here. Maybe not. I would have certainly have a look at it myself. I kind of like this one because you can level out. He connects on this one. There's a great chance he's running out. I don't think he hits it very hard either. Yeah, just smooth. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think he, you know, he... That's the competitor in him, recognizing I'm the favorite here. Let me not panic. Well, now it's just ball management. Yeah. Still requires thinking. Yeah, how easy is the 7-Eleven? That's what I would... Hmm. I think the seven eleven is pretty easy to so so you can run a couple balls and get on that. I didn't think he would try to open, but I guess the eight's so easy. Did he get funny here? That's surprising. He went into a ball. Yeah, it looks like he did get a little awkward. If he can hit the eight, if he can make the eight, okay then. But if he's got to hit it with left English, 
he may have to be roaming, you know, kind of near on top of the seven, especially if he's got to hit it somewhat light. Well, it was a little shocking to me that he went into a ball. Oh, the nine goes. What are we thinking? Why is I he thinking know. about the eight? I the nine goes. The, does it? Oh, yeah, all day. He can come right around for the seven next. Oh, he's shooting the two. Wow. Big pocket, though. He's thinking to himself, how do I hit it in the one place it won't go? I'm surprised he didn't look at the nine, really, to be honest with you. I thought the nine went easy. Well, he's pretty disappointed with that <laughs> opportunity to capture the match. Now be out of a great chance to run out. Yeah, he's definitely got five. You would think maybe six with the fifteen. Uh oh. Uh oh. I thought it was gonna lay on the on the rail there. That could have got funny. He can get out, but it's not easy. You can see the four that you would think are very doable. Is he going up for the 11 here or trying to come across for the oh, seven? Oh, the 11's great, yeah. No, he's going for the seven. Well, that's okay, but you got to be a little more precise. If you get up in the center, you just work the rock around, and for the nine and seven, it opens up both. Now you have to play a little cute shape on the 11 next to get on the nine because the nine doesn't pass the 11. So your shot I liked a little better, getting to the center of the table and cutting the 11. Oh, and that's the reason why, because he had to manipulate the cue ball. That's the reason why you don't want to do that, have to do that, right? Hmm. Yeah, he's definitely. <laughs> well, now Appleton back with the in the driver's seat. Yeah, really hard to make a mistake from here. I never say that when I'm playing, <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> He's a little worried about this shot. Right, because um, the, but the 12 tends to drift up a little bit, but you can bank yeah, it, yeah. you know, the bank on the 7 then plays bigger. So You can do a lot of things. Right. The the, eight's, the 13's going to come open. You can go rail first here. You yeah. can do a number of things. Yeah. I mean, like, it's gonna you're going to be fine. Just don't panic about it. I probably move the ball versus the bank myself for the 9 or the 11. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. You could end up in the funny zone, but you're not going to end up trapped. You're only going to need one. I mean, the bank's pretty easy, too. Yeah, I come up myself. He's looking at putting the cue ball between the 9 and the 11 or three rails around, are you saying? I think uh, if you go between the 9 and 11, position's way easier. Otherwise, uh, your speed's got to be, you got small windows when he's playing the bank. Yeah, it does need two. Well, that's probably the best because he, uh, he got about as good could, as you could on the did. bank, too. And he knew he could get there, so Mil minimal risk. Beautiful shot. This table's playing nice, though. I mean, it's not. Yeah, one, one for the match. Okay, Darren Appleton. Moving on. Well, interesting match. Couple little mistakes there here late at night. Great match overall, though. A couple missed balls there, but. All right, that concludes this edition of the 2022 One Pocket event here at the International Open. It's been our pleasure to share insights and our time as always. Thank you and so long for just a while.